and I had singing lessons um, with this fantastic teacher called Eric Vitro. He's here in LA. And I had like three or four sessions a week with him. And he really helped me a lot. Um, but I constantly felt emboldened by the idea that really they wanted an actress. They didn't want a singer. And I could see with the Baker's Wife especially, with some of her big numbers, it was, it was a big acting performance and that's what was required. And, um, and I know by the time all of us got to the first day of rehearsals, we'd all kind of practiced on our own. And we'd never sung in front of each other. And so there was this terrifying moment when Rob said, okay, so we're gonna sing. And everyone went, nah! like everyone was so frightened, you know. Um, the good news was everyone felt they were in the same position. Um, and so we just started to sing together. And, um, and I will say what started off as being a really daunting process and something that I was embarrassed to do, sing in front of other people, became, I will say, one of the most fulfilling experiences of my entire life, getting to play this part and, and sing with confidence and, um, and complexity. And, it was just so thrilling and I'll never forget it that day where we got to sing with a 60 piece orchestra. It just blew my hair back. It was amazing. It's so funny. I think that that's what's, that's what's so great about this, um, this show is that um, yes, it's emotional and yes, there's a kind of, there's some dark undercurrents, but the humor of it and the wit of it are just so brilliant. So the characters have a sort of larger than life feeling. And, um, and particularly, I think when you see the characters start to unravel um, in their plight to get what they want, I think you're laughing with them as it gets more desperate and more insane and particularly the baker and the baker's wife, who were just the shell of their former selves by the time they get what they want. It was just exciting to play those scenes, and especially with people like James Corden, who's such a brilliant comedian, and um, you know, to play off him, bat these scenes around and stretch them around to, we were you know, given, given at least to improv and add anything we want, and, and so that was, that was really cool. I think everybody loves a great story. And so these musicals like Chicago and Les Mis, I think they offer you a, an escape and a spectacle. And I think that's the great joy of musicals. And that's hopefully what we will achieve with Into the Woods. But yet I think that there's a much more sort of human heartbeat to Into the Woods than a lot of these musicals. I mean, the theme very much is careful what you wish for, um, because the repercussions of that um, can be quite dangerous or um, not as fulfilling as you'd imagine, and certainly not what you ever envisioned for what you wished. Um, and so that is a kind of ongoing theme for nearly every character in the film. And it offers you that theme of maybe you should just look at what you have and celebrate what you have rather than what you think you need or want. And I hope that they'll feel we've been loyal to the play because I know people have, there's a kind of ardent love for it amongst certain fans. Um, but I hope they just feel that, yes, we've been loyal to it, but, but that we've, um, we've brought it to so many more people. I think that's really the great joy of film. Film just brings it to so many more people. And, um, and I think any fans of the musical now can get really, really up close and personal with it, which is another of the great joys of filmmaking. You can fully immerse yourself in that world. You're not watching it in a kind of proscenium type atmosphere. You're, you're with these characters, you're in the woods with them.